Hello choir and welcome to episode five of Choir at Home. Uh, today's episode is the first uh, in a pair of episodes in which we are going to be talking about vowel sounds. So first of all, uh, why are vowel sounds important enough uh, to merit their own episode, uh, let alone uh, two episodes? And the answer to that is that fundamentally the sound of the human voice, whether we are speaking or singing, is vowel sounds. They're the base ingredient, they're the wheat in your pasta, they're the maize uh, in your cornflakes. They are the fundamental ingredient behind the human voice. In the same way that the sound of a violin fundamentally is uh, a bow rubbing against a string, uh, the sound of a uh, xylophone is two bits of wood whacking against each other. Uh, the sound of the human voice, singing or speaking, is a reedy sound uh, produced by the vibration of uh, your vocal cords in your voice box coming up here and being formed into distinct, different colours called vowel sounds uh, by the movement of your tongue and of your lips. So the existence of vowel sounds won't be a revelation uh, to any of us. We use them, like I said, all the time when we're speaking and furthermore, um, we learn about them at school. So, um, starting off with a simple question. In English, how many vowel sounds are there? Now, those of you who've fallen for my very nasty trick question will have gone, Mr. Lowther, in English, there are five vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, U. Why? 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 Does Y count? Maybe Y as well. Maybe Y. Um, I'm afraid that answer is way, way off. Because while there are five different vowel letters, A, E, I, O, U, um, by most counts, there are something like 16 distinct vowel sounds in the English language. Um, for the sake of comparison, uh, Italian has seven, just seven, so under half. Um, German and French, by most counts, have 14. Um, so, if some of you are struggling with the maths of that, you go A E I O U and you're saying there are 16 different vowel sounds. How does that work? Well, take this for example. Take the first letter of the alphabet, the letter A. Well, I'm going to give you an example of five words in which this written letter A is signalling five completely different vowel sounds. So, first example, father, R. Cat, a, all, or, many, e, day, a, which is a diphthong. So, same letter, letter a, for a, a, or, e, a. And it's not just the letter a uh, that is inconsistent in this way and behaves in this manner. In fact, the English language is full of words that are spelt the same, that look on paper as though they should rhyme, but are in fact pronounced rather differently. So take, for example, break and freak. Take sew, like sewing, and few. Take horse and worse. Take beard and heard. Take cord and word. And sometimes you can come up with combinations of three which are inconsistent in this manner. Um, OMB. So take comb, like a hair comb. Ohm. Tomb, like what you put a dead person in. Oom. And bomb. Om. So ohm, oom, om, all spelt with just OMB. Same with blood. Uh. Food. Oo. Good. Uh. Okay, so ooh, uh, ah, <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, all being signalled by two O's next to each other. And to make this more complicated, sometimes we have the same vowel sound being indicated by different letters. So take a very basic vowel sound like uh, uh, 
you know, a choir or something like that. In hum, that's spelt with a U. In blood, it's spelt with two O's. In trouble, it's spelt with an O and a U. And even within the same word, you get this vowel sound, a, uh, being indicated by different letters. So take above uh, and among. So two uh sounds, the first one's spelt with an A, the second one is spelt with an O. Uh, and brother, for example. So the first one's spelt with an O, the second one is spelt with an E-R. So the fundamental message from all of this is that, yes, there are five vowel letters, um, but hiding behind these are many, many different and distinct vowel sounds. So, why does any of this matter? Some of you might be thinking, um, that's all very clever, those examples you ju just gave, Mr. Lowther, um, but why care? Okay, we internalize all these rules anyway. We, we learn them instinctively. Perhaps those examples I just gave with the spellings got you thinking, but at your core, you kind of knew all that already, okay? About food and good and blood all being spelt the same, but pronounced differently. Um, secondly, our ears, when we're hearing things, are very, very forgiving, okay? Uh, and people, when they talk, are very imprecise about their vowel sounds, okay? This is the secret behind different people's different accents. It's the slightly different choice and formulation of their vowel sounds. So whereas I might say, I'm lost, American would go, I'm lost. And the Queen would go, I'm lost, okay? So in all three of those examples, um, uh, very, very different vowel sounds are being used for the same words. And yet, in all three examples, we can understand perfectly well what's being said, okay? Vowel precision, uh, perhaps, isn't really that important. So why would it matter? Um, I'm just quickly going to give you two reasons uh, why when it comes to singing, vowel choice uh, and vowel sounds require just a little bit more thought and a little bit more precision than when we're just uh, talking in everyday life. Because singing is very similar to talking in many ways, but in some other ways it's also uh, very different. So, singing really is the only time um, when we hold on vowel sounds for an extended period of time. Think of all, almost any piece of music we sing at choir, you know, oh, for the wings, for the wings of a dove, okay? We sing in that rhythm, but no one would ever talk at that speed with vowel sounds taking up, you know, several seconds. Uh, think of the Bach Guno Ave Maria um, girls, which you sing at even song sometimes. Ave So holding on vowel sounds for that length of time is something that's very unique to singing. We never do it when we're talking. Therefore, when we're singing, the vowel sounds are a lot more on display. Second thing that is different, okay? In choral singing, we are singing together. We are singing at the same time. We are singing on top of each other. Again, this rarely um, if ever happens, uh, by design at least, when we're talking. When we're talking to someone, we listen to what they say, and then we say something and they listen to us, okay? If we're talking on top of each other, um, our conversation is kind of a fail. In choral singing, by design, we're supposed to be singing together. And this means that singing the same vowel sounds at the same time is very, very important. And this is one of the secrets behind that lovely, lovely, blended choir sound that we all love so much from our favourite choirs, whether live or in um, recording. That magical um, choir sound comes from a group of people 
um, singing the same vowel sound at the same time with the same resonance uh, and with the same tone and at the same volume, but most importantly, having the same vowel sound. Think um, choir, for example, the absolutely magical opening of Birds Ave Verum with those bars just of a single, single chord being held and that sound growing out essentially just of holding one vowel sound ah, for a long time, okay? Um, if you're lucky enough to be in a household with a uh, choir sibling or there are two singers, you can run a little experiment here with blends, okay? Choose something simple like Amen, you know, from our plain song Connex. Amen, okay? Sing it at the same time with both of you pronouncing it exactly the same way. And then see what it sounds like if one of you goes Amen and another one of you does slightly different vowel sounds. A, mun, for example. And what you'll find from that is that instantly um, the blend absolutely goes. And again, often when you hear choirs and you just go, everyone's kind of singing, but I I'm not getting that, what I'd call that lovely choir sound. It's often the result of lots and lots of people just singing different vowel sounds at different times. It doesn't bind together. So, um, just a little note about uh, how this episode's going to work and the next one. It's going to be a discussion, okay? We're going to introduce concepts. We're going to get thinking about vowel sounds. And along the way, there are going to be little exercises and little thought experiments. Um, what I'm not going to do is coach you through each vowel sound talk a lot about where the tongue should be or whatever like that, uh, give you prescriptive advice about how the uh, vowels are all formed, or um, much less a series of rules about how you apply them to different musical contexts, okay? Vowels, as I said, are the fundamental ingredient of the human voice. So let's get thinking about them. So let's meet some of the basic vowel sounds. Uh, now, how is this introduction going to be made? Well, happily, um, people who are experts in this kind of thing um, have put all the basic vowel sounds into two uh, different families. Uh, and they're not two families of vowel sounds sort of self-isolating in different houses, sort of in two completely different columns. Rather, they're on a sort of sliding scale or a spectrum, uh, a lot like that acid alkaline um, a spectrum we learn when we're at school. So continuing uh, that metaphor, let's say the acid side uh, is kind of one of the families. So the fronting vowels, okay, of which the most extreme are pH zero, I think, um, is the vowel sound E, like cheese, okay? So on one side we have the fronting vowels with E at one end. Right on the other side, okay, our alkaline side, let's say, we have got um, uh, the backing vowels, of which the most extreme example is ooh, as in ooh, I'm enjoying this video, or something like that. So ooh is our sort of pH 14, uh, E is our uh, pH 0, and right in the middle, our sort of pH 7, our sort of water, is R, which kind of uh, links them all up, okay? So let's get to know the fronting vowels in detail uh, a little bit more, because it's not just uh, E, R, U, there's a whole bunch of vowel, different vowel sounds um, that are quite close to each other that sit in between those three um, sort of buttresses, okay? So the fronting vowels um, are created uh, by our tongue, the kind of middle bit of our tongue, uh, moving up towards um, our hard palate, uh, up or down towards our hard palate, depending on where we are. And to introduce you to this, um, uh, here are five words. Bean, like a baked bean. Bin, like a thing I'm going to put my rubbish in. Ben, like my mate Ben's coming over. Ban, like I am 
banned from leaving my house. A uh, bar, like a thing I lean on to order my beer, okay? So, bean, bin, ben, ban, bar. Bean, bin, ben, ban, bar. Just say that to yourself. Good. And rather than just explain to you what the tongue's doing to formulate those different sounds, um, let's do an exercise instead. So go to your bathroom mirror and just say those five different vowel sounds without the letter B on the end. So E, 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 R, 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 okay? Just go to the bathroom mirror, tilt your head back slightly so you can see your tongue and go E, 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 R, R, R. And what you'll see is each time your tongue, the middle part of your tongue, just moves down slightly. Um, you could do another exercise. You could just apply that to a piece of music. So just on a single note, go bean, bean, pen, pan, pa, and feel the way that inside your mouth slightly different actions are happening. If you need that point made in a more obvious way, just take the two extreme ones. So bean and bar, or peat and part, like a part in a play, uh, on a single note. So bean ba bean ba bean ba and just feel how the movements are different okay so e e e a r the fronting vowels so now let's meet uh the other family the sort of alkaline side in this um uh, metaphor we're using um and they are called the backing vowels um, and they're called this because uh, the tongue is still moving up and down, but it's moving up and down uh, towards a slightly further back part in your mouth. So not moving up towards the hard palate, that bony cartilagey sort of feeling thing uh, at the top of your mouth, um, but towards the soft palate, which is that sort of tendony, muscly um, sort of part at the top of your mouth, which is um, slightly further back. So, let's get to know some of these backing vowels. So here are some words for you. Boo, like a ghost. Boo, okay, you scared me. Uh, book, like a thing you'd read. Boat, like a thing you'd sail. Uh, bought, like I bought some shopping last week and I haven't been allowed out of my house since then. Uh, a bot, like a robot, and then just a uh, link it through pH 7, we have bar with that neutral R sound. So, boo, book, boat, bought, bot, bar. Okay? And uh, I I'm sorry, if, if I was slightly better at this, I'd have graphics with all these words flashing up. It's not just that I'm too lazy, um, I'm legitimately too stupid, uh, and I can't afford fancy video software uh, yet. So, lazy, stupid, poor, that's my excuse but do write them down, okay? And uh, why not, if you've written them all down, try the whole spectrum from fronting vowels to backing vowels. So, bean, bin, ben, ban, bar, bot, bought, boat, book, boo. And the other way, boo, book, boat, bought, bot, bar, ban, ben, been, been. Okay? And just to get to know the backing vowels a little bit more, um, sadly, the bathroom exercise, the bathroom mirror exercise, won't work. Because what you'll notice for oo and the ones closest to oo is that our lips are kind of involved in the process as well, not just our tongue. So oo, our lips are kind of like that and they gradually get further apart until, ah, oh, the lips really aren't together. Um, and uh, just to get you used to that concept, um, here are some exercises. So first of all, say ooh quickly, ooh, okay? Keeping your mouth in that position, try to say ah. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, it's really, really hard. It doesn't sound right. And similarly, if you tried to sing with R with your lips like that, you wouldn't be forming a proper sound. Um, but do the same uh, in reverse. Say R quickly. And with your mouth in that position, try and say OO. 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 
Ooh, it sounds like my tongue's been chopped off, okay? So um, it's not right for that. So there's a different lip position um, uh, as well as the tongue position associated um, with the backing vowels, okay? This sliding spectrum uh, doesn't cover all the vowels. There are some vowel sounds like a, uh, like a bun, uh, and it's not entirely clear where in those two families that would sit. It's kind of mixed. It doesn't cover any of the diphthongs or anything like that. But this sort of sliding spectrum, um, sort of acid, alkaline, um, fronting vowels, backing vowels, um, is just a good way of getting to know um, some of the basic vowel sounds. Bean, bin, ben, ban, bar, bot, bought, boat, book, boot. So those are all the vowel sounds we are going to meet for this week. Like I said, that's not all the vowel sounds. Next week we're going to meet a few more. So we're just going to end today um, with four small bits of advice from me about vowel sounds. Like I said, I don't want to hand a bunch of prescriptive rules or examples or drills which you're just instantly going to forget. I want to get you guys thinking about this sort of stuff. So, four things to think about um, with vowel sounds. Um, number one, form your vowel sounds distinctly and be aware of the differences between them. OK, we already uh, talked about how when we're singing, the vowel sounds are extended often for very long periods of time. They are more on show. And if they're slightly wrong, it's a lot more noticeable. Now, choir, you're very good. You make a lovely sound. It makes my job an absolute pleasure. But I won't lie. Occasionally, I look up at an individual or even a section and I can see people singing away with their mouth sort of hardly moving at all, okay? Uh, and what happens with this is, as an individual, we're not um, uh, making as lovely a sound, as clear a sound, as musical a sound as we're capable of making, and that effect is multiplied by the number of people who are doing it. I always think the perfect example to look at is Julie Andrews, if you think of uh, Mary Poppins, um, and the sound of music. And if you look at Julie Andrews, her mouth is always moving so much, whether she's speaking or she's singing. And you can hear the result. Okay, every single word she says or sings is incredibly clear. So a little sort of experiment, a little exercise for that. Um, think of the three vowel sounds that are the most different. E, U, R. Um, and just sing those on a single note. First of all, using a very restricted range of movement. And then secondly, by way of comparison, just get your jaw a bit loose, get a bit more loosey-goosey, uh, stretch out, um, think about those differences and do the same thing. So, uh, versus the more constricted one you already did. So thinking about E with that tongue high, ooh, where our lips are going to come together a bit more, and then R where everything, the tongue is going to go down and the lips are going to come apart, okay? Um, link that into episode one. Remember, we sang up the triads, guys, with Z, U. So Z, U, and Z, R. Again, do a similar experiment. Try that with a very limited range of movement in your lips uh, and your mouth. So Z, U, Z, O. And then compare the sound of that to something where we're just slightly more willing to move and form them more distinctly. Z, U, thinking about the lips moving for U. Z, U, really
really thinking about emerging onto R and letting that tongue drop and our jaw um, not be tense. Practice this on an Amen, uh, why not, with R and air. So the first piece of advice, form your vowels very distinctly and be aware of the differences between them. Piece of advice number two, think about which vowel sound you want to use. Um, like I discussed at the beginning of the episode, quite often the vowel sound that is required is slightly hidden or not obvious from the way a, um, a word is spelled. So if you're not sure, try a few different ones. So E, U and R, you're not going to mix those up. Those are very, very different, but very fine differences for instance, between bean, like a baked bean, and a bin that you put rubbish in, bean, bin. That's a very, very fine shade of difference, okay? In choir, you'll get guidance from me about what vowel sound, which vowel sound, sorry, um, I think is required, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be thinking about it yourself as well. A little thought experiment um, is with Latin. Now, I'm quite pernickety with how I think the Latin should be pronounced. Uh, lots of people are and have very different opinions to me. If you take a classic example of incorrect vowel choice, it's uh, think of Domine Jesu Christe, which you find with choirs sometimes, um, is sung and said with this A sound, this diphthong. So. Domine Jesu Christe. Okay? And to my ears and to my mind, it's a simple thing. They've just chosen the wrong vowel sounds there. So, going through the thought process, I might go, well, what do I want there? First of all, do I want a short I sound or a long I sound? Do I want a baked bean or a rubbish bin? Do I want Domi? Or don me. And I think I've just decided to myself that I like the long I sound, okay? Don me, like that. And then that offensive A sound, that A sound which I found so offensive. Well, what do I want instead? And I think I, after experimenting with a few different things, might conclude that I want my mate Ben, all this stuff around us, air, okay? So, air and e, so rather than domine, we get domine, Jesu Christ, etc. So that's an example. I've gone through a thought process of thinking about which vowel sounds I'm wanting. And to my mind, uh, just by doing that simple, simple thought process, um, I've actually improved the sound and the colour of the music. So piece of advice number two is think about which vowel sound you want. It's not always entirely obvious. Piece of advice number three, substitutions. Now, um, it's important to sing the right words with the right vowel sound so that we're comprehensible. But if you're clever about it, um, in certain contexts, you can actually choose to sing the wrong vowel sound, the vowel sound which is slightly different from the one which is literally correct. This is particularly useful if we're trying to support our upper range, where quite often we want our tongue to be just a little bit further down. Um, classic example choristers, think of Stanford's Song of Wisdom, Come Unto Me, where as a full treble section, we have a top B natural, okay? And what would we do there? Would we try and literally say this uh, uh vowel sound? What we might find useful is just to move it to R. So, come unto me, or whatever it is. So, C-A-L-M, calm, rather than come. OK, so um, I won't give you lots of uh, prescriptive examples just to say if you're clever about it, sometimes you can very usefully substitute vowel sounds in 
when you are singing. If you do it artfully, people won't perceive you uh, as having done something wrong. Fourth piece of advice. All vowel sounds should be spacious and resonant. Tension is never good. Space is always good. So think about the two vowel sounds where the tongue is at its highest. So on the extreme end of the fronting vowels, E, and on the extreme end of the backing vowels, U. So even with these, okay, we need space and resonance in the voice, okay? Tension and bunching up is never appropriate. So as an exercise, just sing U and E on a single note, but imagine there's a ping pong ball inside your mouth. So there needs to be space for a ping pong ball inside your mouth, no matter how high your tongue is. So rather than a sort of Okay, so with all the vowels, we need space and we need resonance, okay? Space in the mouth, resonance in our tone. And be particularly wary that the ones at the extreme ends, where our tongue is at its highest, have the uh, biggest tendency to be constricted when we are singing. So those are the four bits of advice. Form your vowel sounds distinctly. Think about which vowel sound you are wanting to sing substitute them sometimes if it helps. Sing with space and resonance, no matter what the vowel sound is. Well, thank you for joining me, choir. I hope you found that uh, informative and improving. Uh, we are gonna be building on some of these concepts uh, next week with uh, episode two on vowels, where we're gonna be learning about some more advanced concepts. We're learning about diphthongs, we're going to be learning about schwas and uh, triphthongs, we're going to be learning about semi-vowel glides, these vowel sounds that are masquerading as consonants, um, and we're talking, most importantly, arguably, about stress patterns, strong and weak syllables, strong and weak vowels, and how this applies to texts written in verse with consistent stress patterns, like hymns, um, and uh, texts written in prose uh, without consistent stress patterns uh, such as psalms, things like that. I'll be seeing lots of you tomorrow for Zoom Evensong and a few of you on Friday for Zoom um, Compline. Um, until then, stay indoors and keep on singing. See you next time. <laughs>